Today we've got something pretty cool to take a look at. This is the Silverstone Grandia Series GD08. This is, according to Silverstone, an amazing home theater server case with incredible storage and cooling capacity. That pretty much sums it up. So basically, in a similar form factor to their previous home theater cases, and you know, similar form factor as well as similar style, meaning you've got a nice thick aluminum front bezel, you've got the slick, elegant looks, they have managed to cram, and you know, cram is such an inelegant word to describe this product, which isn't really fair, but uh, to cram and <laughs> up to 12 hard drives and compatibility for an SSI, that is like Uber EATX motherboard, and, and long expansion slots, meaning you can install any graphics card, pretty much as many hard drives as you want, and pretty much any motherboard you want, in what is basically not much bigger than a regular HTPC case. So I'm very excited to take a look at this. They've actually got a warning right here. This is a unique product. Please read the included manual before proceeding with installation. So I'm guessing they had to make some sort of weird arrangements with the internals in order to make all of that stuff fit. With, uh, with pretty much, yeah, you get a zero compromises configuration capability without, uh, without overdoing the size, you know. I mean, it's one thing to design the Cosmos 2, which can fit pretty much anything, but it's the size of, you know, an, you know, a plane. Um, whereas this is, you know, I guess a little bit more, more thoughtful, not to, you know, rag on the Cosmos 2, because it definitely has its place. Uh, we see we've got hard packing foam. Usually I prefer to see the softer foams just because they tend to take a bit more of a beating before they yield. However, this one apparently arrived without any difficulty. It helps that Silverstone actually uses a higher quality outside carton box than most case manufacturers do. Um, here, I'll show you guys. You can see they use a, uh, a double wall here and then they... this. Um, this actually improves puncture resistance, just the finish that they use on the outside as well. So it's, it's less of a concern for me with a Silverstone box than it would be with someone else. GTO, yeah, this is really not that big. Compared to something like an LC17 or, you know, like one of their, one of their staple products that doesn't have this enormous compatibility. Um, sorry about that, guys. Battery died. You know the drill. So let's start with the outside of the case because, you know, Silverstone is certainly well known for elegant, beautiful cases and this is definitely no extension. extension. It is an extension of that principle and it is no exception. So you can see here we've got just a gorgeous brushed aluminum front. Now, brushed aluminum is a bit of a double-edged sword for me because I'm always afraid to touch it because it tends to get gunked up if you get your fingerprints all over it. But as long as you put it somewhere where it's going to be relatively safe, it'll look beautiful for years to come. We've got our power and reset switches as well as our um, as well as an LED indicator on the front we've got two five and a quarter inch bays so you can put up to a couple different drives in here if you want two USB 3.0 ports as well as front headphones and microphone if you were going to use this as like a desktop tower on your case and it looks just wonderful I love the finish that they put on their cases on the side we've got two 120 millimeter cooling fan slots including as you can see right here their uh, sorry, push. Really, push? No. Give me a sec. There we go. Never mind. I got it. Okay. Yes, you push it, and then you take it off. So including an easily removable uh, fan filter that has, and this is something they explained to me at CES this year, this is apparently the most optimal baffle to place in front of a fan in order to have as little impact as possible on airflow while reducing the audible noise of the fan. So there you go. You can see Silverstone spent... Uh, <laughs> the guys I was talking to were like, yeah, we spent a really, really long time on this, trying absolutely everything. So there you go. That is the result of months of engineering. That baffle, which apparently will make your fans perform better and be less noisy. So here you can see the 120 millimeter cooling fan slots. I'm just going to go ahead and put this back on now. You can actually screw it into place if you want. So you can see there's a couple screw holes there, or you can just leave it slidable just like that. Let's move around to the other side where we find, oh, sorry, 
It's not super heavy. I was just kind of, it's kind of awkward. So where we have another 120 millimeter fan. So this one you pull off, including the same baffle. Uh, it doesn't include the fans by default, but I mean, most people who are going to be buying high, super high end cases, in my experience, are usually finding their own fans that they prefer as well. So there's not much benefit to including basic fans with, uh, with a case like this. Here we've got three 120 millimeter fans. Now this is also compatible with one 120, three eighties, or six 60 millimeter fans, should you so desire. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off. Yeah, these just snap off. So you can see the wide variety of mounting holes that are there on the bottom of the case. So you can see we have uh, two fans installed out of the factory, giving you overall positive air pressure inside the case. This is one of the uh, key concepts that Silverstone has really been working on over the last couple of years actually and that is positive airflow so positive or positive air pressure rather so positive air air pressure keeps the keeps it doesn't keep dust from accumulating inside your case but it reduces the amount of dust that can get into your case because if you have negative air pressure that is to say more exhaust fans than intake fans what happens is dust will tend to get sucked in places where there aren't fans whereas if you have more intake than exhaust it'll tend to have just a you know a passive little bit of airflow out of all those little gaps in the corners of the case which can keep dust from being sucked into them as long as your intakes are filtered that is on the fans that you're using for intake otherwise it's not helpful at all okay so on the back we've got seven plus one configuration for pci slots you can use that for a fan controller or whatever else but it means we can't support XLATX motherboards in spite of the wide motherboard compatibility we've got our standard sort of bottom mounted power supply okay and then I.O. as well as two 80 millimeter fan slots. Now, let's go ahead and open it up and I am very, very curious to see the inside of this, especially so that I can know what merits that special warning about uh, making sure you read the manual before trying to build a system in this case because it must be, it must be pretty complicated then. I mean, you know, it's probably not complicated, but it might be a little bit tricky. Like, you know, you'll go ahead and you'll install all your hard drives to find out that if you install the hard drives first, you can't install your motherboard or something like that. Um, got a couple vibration dampeners here. So those guys uh, press down on the handles. When you're holding up to 12 hard drives at a time, you do need handles. Even when we did our little build in the Array R2 with the Windows Home Server, six hard drives in one go is precarious. You want to make sure that you're holding it very securely because if you drop them, I mean, even if they're not dead, even if they still work, you can never trust them with your data again anyway. So those little pads hold these down in place so that they don't cause any vibration. You can also see there's anti-vibration padding here as well, just to keep the hard drive cage here from transferring vibrations to the top panel. Other than that, the case is pretty much one solid piece. So yeah, if you want to fit anything wider than standard ATX in here, it looks like you're going to have to play some funny games with removing these fans uh, in order to get the extra space for the motherboard. It looks like this whole mounting system thing for it actually comes out so hold on a second let's uh give, give me a minute with the manual actually i'll just i'll be able to tell you guys more about this let me start by saying that this case is probably the one of the most confusing ones i've encountered but it also has the best manual i have ever encountered so in spite of it being a black and white manual and look how thick it is this manual is like head and shoulders better than any other case i've ever encountered so it tells you there's an installation guide. And the installation guide isn't just like how to put in a PCI Express graphics card, no, no. The installation guide is step-by-step, step, one by one, what order to install the components in to make sure that everything will fit. Gives you little tips and tricks about make sure that there's nothing interfering with this particular spot right here while you're putting in this thing. So it shows you all the installation guidey stuff. It explains how to use things like these, whoops, these, which are used to mount a hard drive in this little tiny gap over here, but more on that later. Um, it also it gives you recommendations for a bunch of different components. So they explain, oh, okay, well, if you're going to use a dual... Here, how many case manufacturers bother to tell, this, tell you this? If you're going to use a dual CPU motherboard, use one with the CPU socket in the top right corner because that will give you better compatibility with this case. That kind of tip is fantastic to have as an end user and most manufacturers don't really bother to tell you stuff like that they expect you to figure it out on your own but it's in here 
very, very cool. They also tell you, you know, if you want to put a high-end graphics card here, you're going to have to not install hard drives here, here, and here. And, uh, you know, just component size limitations. They have a whole big schwack of stuff about this. Make sure you use this kind of right angle cable as opposed to this kind of right angle cable. Fan configurations, uh, what can fit according to what kind of a motherboard you're using. See, 6x60 mil fans is for the SSI configuration. All right, recommended coolers, graphics cards, what direction the airflow should go in in order to be optimized for your case. This is, this is just like great stuff. Okay. So let's move on and let's actually look at the case itself. So you can pull this out with the two handles and it'll be heavier when there are drives in it. But I want to first explain where all the drives go. So here you can put three, three and a quarter, three and a half inch drives. These won't interfere with anything. They're just across from the power supply. So no matter what kind of graphics cards you have or whatever other hoo-ha, that will be just fine. You can then put another up to four here, depending on the orientation. You can turn them either this way or this way, um, as long as you don't have a super long graphics card installed. And if this is for like media storage, then that's probably the kind of configuration you go with. You can then, and this is awesome, put a an eighth three and a half inch drive like over here so you actually run the SATA connect cables through here so the drive sits like uh like this i believe uh nope like this sorry guys it's really tricky so it sits like this so you can just barely access them and run the cables to it and uh, so that's eight three and a half inch drives you can put two two and a half inch drives oh yeah and it uses this adapter over there so that bolts to the side of the case, which then screws into the drive, meaning it's not sticking right up against the case with a risk of shorting out. So we've got two two and a half inch uh, drive bays here, and you run the cables to those up here as well. Um, and then finally, the two five and a quarter inch bays, which you can also use to install more three and a half inch drives or more two and a half inch drives, should you see fit. So that is up to 12 total drives just with this innovative piece of metal. So these guys are fully dampened. These ones are partially dampened. You can see there's dampening here, but they had to cut this out so that there's space for graphics cards and it's fully dampened up here. So you're still putting it up to four screws per drive, which is fine. Uh, these are not dampened, they're optical drives, so that's just fine. And this guy over here is not dampened. If you really need, you know, 10 drives and you've already replaced both of your five and a quarter inch drives with hard drives, then you can put it in there um, and you'll be happy. I hope with that result because that's already kind of ridiculous. Ha! Huh. Front court, front panel connectors. So here we find pretty much standard fare. We've got our internal USB 3 and they do include an adapter in case your motherboard does not support USB 3 via an internal header. Just do that. Alternately, you can source one of those other adapters, which uh, I actually just grabbed one. I don't know what I did with it. So whatever, you can source adapters that allow you to turn one of these into a pass-through to, uh, to the back of the case as well, and you can just run it through a PCI slot. Okay, we've got our front uh, power and reset switches as well as power LED, so that front LED. And then we've also got our hard drive LED, so two LEDs in the front. We've got our front HD audio, and then we've got pretty much just the connectors for our fans. So we include three 120 millimeter fans, although you can install just a whack load of other fans. So I made a mistake and I said you could install a 120 millimeter fan here at the beginning of the video. You cannot. That is a filter for the bottom of the power supply. So you can install up to five 120 millimeter fans if you take this guy out. And then you can also do, right, you, or you can do, this is that part where you can do the multiple different configurations. So if you want to do the 80s or the 60 mils, depending on what kind of a motherboard you have in. This is your standard ATX width and your standard ATX length. So you do have to remove some of this stuff or make it more low profile in order to make room for it. I think the inside is fairly self-explanatory. Once you get past this, which is not self-explanatory at all, but now that I get it, is actually still fairly easy to use. So you install everything in it. You install all your components in here. You do like kind of a test fit where you look at it really carefully as you, as you make your way down. And then you have successfully crammed, or well, Silverstone has successfully helped you cram more hardware than I would have even thought possible in a small space as well possible. So whether you need dual CPUs and you know 64, 128 gigs of RAM in your media PC or not, now you can. Thank you for watching this unboxing and first look on Linus Tech Tips, and don't forget to subscribe.